Okay, good, uh, good, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, can you get me, Lighton? Yes, we can, yeah. loud and clear. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Um, uh, my presentation, uh, the way uh, we have prepared it, the first part, um, I'll briefly talk about uh, the, the, the history of uh, how we muted the idea of the repository. And then the, the, the last part, that's when we shall talk about how we can success, successfully populate our repository. Okay. okay. So the first part, uh, the presentation outline will be as follows. I'll do the introduction and why uh, we thought uh, the IR was going to benefit us as the UNSA, then the rationale, the implementation, what software equipment we used. Okay. And then I'll go to the management, the managing and marketing and populating our IR. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, the, 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 what does an IR do? Like in our case, it uh, provides an uh, interface for our online submission of research applications that is via an intranet. And then it also provides open access to the content. And then it enables our library to share uh, the, our, 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 our AR enables other universities which have similar IRs we can share the metadata. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then what? 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 What, what, what is our? What, what is our? What is the impact of the? Scholarly communication. Okay. Um, okay. Let me just. Okay. So IRS pro provide excellent opportunities for libraries to to reassert their importance in organizations in the face of uh, declaring user dependence on libraries for information access. And uh, from our experience. Uh, from the statistics which I will show later in, the, in our discussion, you see how our IR has, has, has enabled this access. And um, okay. so uh, the idea of uh, the IR tunes was muted in 2010. Okay, uh, 2010 through a grant by the uh, university in the in the in the Netherlands. Okay, so a team was uh, was set up. Uh, two universities were identified in Zambia. Okay, that is the University of Zambia Library and the Copper Belt University. So uh, for the for for the invest of Zambia, uh, uh, one member of staff from the computer center was identified to provide the IT support. And then the two librarians were identified to do the management size. Okay, that is what what, what also happened to CBU. They had one, one member of staff from the computer center and two librarians. Okay, the, the rationale was to develop a student management system and to also establish an institutional repository. Okay. And then the, through the same grant, uh, the CICT, the computer centers of both universities, were equipped with servers to manage the IR. Okay. Our IR, our information uh, institutional repository, we are using the DSpace, uh, which is an open source software. We don't pay anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have also in a registered our IR with uh, Open Dua. Okay, Open Dua is a is a is a registry. It's important that if if you set up your IR, you you have to register it with this uh, Open Dua directory. So our IR, uh, the investor of Zambia, at the moment I think it's the only investor in the in, in Zambia, the investor of Zambia IR, which is appearing on the 
uh, open door uh, registry. Okay. So what are the key features of our IR? Uh, we do archiving, we disseminate, and also there's the administration of the communities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so far, um, so far as that today, we have archived close to uh, 6,000 documents. We have archived about um, uh, 4,500 master's thesis, that is includes the master's and PhDs. And we have got 1,500 uh, staff uh, publications, okay? Okay, that is our use, usage statistics. And these are our top country searches. Like for, exa for example, as at now, that is from yesterday when I was running these statistics. From in Zambia, we had about 2,345 searches, uh, followed by the UK, 1,295, Japan, Kuwait, and uh, South Africa, that is in Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, was, I just wanted to give you a brief uh, overview, uh, and now we can go in our main discussion, uh, that is the managing and populating our AR. Okay, so I want to go to another slide. Uh, this is a, a slide which we, we, we did with Abel, okay? He's going to join us. If he doesn't join us, then I can complete the discussion. Okay, okay. Um, Okay. So establishing an, an IR is one thing, and working and getting it to work sustainably is another. Okay. Uh, from my experience, um, I would advise uh, any institution which uh, needs to establish uh, the IR uh, to identify the key players. Okay, in the institution. Okay you have to identify the key players because at the end of the day you are going to come up with communities okay you come up with communities for example the invest of zambia i are the way we have well, we, are, we, are, we have organized it uh, we have organized it according to schools okay so we have close to 23 communities which we have we have a school of education engineering, mines, all the schools are, ca are captured. So we are calling them communities. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's very important first uh, you, you decide, you look at your profile of, or, of your organization, what are the key, 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 key areas your organization is concerned in so that you, you craft your communities towards the key areas of your organization. Okay. So uh, some of the challenges uh, we've discovered in populating the IR, our IR, for example, or which you might encounter, has been uh, mostly to do with uh, apathy uh, in the first instances. Because if you look at, uh, for the master's and the PhD dissertations, uh, that one is mandatory. Uh, anyone, uh, for example, before you graduate, you have to submit a hard copy to DGRIS, that is the director of uh, graduate and research studies, and a soft copy is a mandatory. You have to submit those. So for the thesis and dissertations, we are up to date. Where we have slight challenges is maybe organizational challenges. Like, if, for example, if you notice in our repository, if you have interacted with it, you find that uh, we have a gap. It's not a gap, they say. Uh, we don't have dissertations for 2019. Uh, the problem which is there is in 2019 there was no graduation because that is a period when we had a coded outbreak last year. Okay, uh, so that's the gap. So those are organizational challenges. But I, I can safely say that in terms of uh, the number of years ever since the University of Zambia we've graduated, uh, we are up to date. So it's only 2019. So the 2019, 2020, they are going to reflect uh, uh, with this cohort which is graduating. I think it should be in two weeks' time. Okay, so that's uh, the apathy. I'm talking about. We we uh, we, we encounter we 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 encounter we encountered a lot of apathy in our initial stages, especially from the faculty. Because uh, uh, some time back, 
a user had the policy where a lecturer, if maybe when they, if they graduate, they have done a thesis or a PhD, and they deposit it with uh, the library, there was a stipend, some money which was paid to them. So over time, that uh, due to lack of funds, budgetary constraints, that facility has been suspended. So most of the lecturers they will say, no, if I do, if I give my article to you, how much are you going to pay me? Okay, and then there are these issues of copyright. Okay, and then there was also the issue of uh, lack of understanding. Very few people knew what this IRA was all about. Okay, I'm going to we are going to delve into how we have. How, how we have managed to create this awareness whereby now most of the lecturers now are on us wanting that their works are deposited in our IR. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And then the other challenge has been uh, the slow pace the policy has taken long. In our preamble, I think I, I showed you the, the idea of the IR was muted in 2010. It was established fully in, the, in our library in 2011, uh, but from 2011 to date, we still be, we, we have been struggling with the policy. Okay, I will delve much into it uh, in a, a later in our discussion. How far we have gone? Okay. Okay. So these are the key talking points of our our discussion as we go in. If you build it, they will come. Make article depositing fun and attractive and then mandate depositing and providing services. Mandate depositing, I think, mostly is to do with uh, the policy issues also, which we shall delve into. And then the services, some of the examples of the services are self-archiving. Okay, I'll talk about them. Okay. Okay, the idea, that is, if you build it, they'll come. The idea is that once we have the AI in place, situations will bring the work. This has not always been the so with UNSA and the CBU. The researchers, like I earlier said, they, they don't usually come. Okay, so in our policy, uh, we have made it a point, we have crafted it in such a way, the policy, we have crafted it in such a way that it's mandatory. Uh, just the way our special collections policy was crafted. If anyone is working for the University of Zambia, okay, and they have published their work, uh, in a journal, uh, so long as they are on a user payroll, we have got a right to make a, full, a, a copy of that article, regardless of the type of journal. Okay, so to do issues of corporate, uh, we, shall, we, we, we use the Shepard and uh, uh, Romeo, so we to guide us. Wha, wha, what, what are the restrictions with that journal? Some, 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 some journals will give us. Uh, a right to photocopy to, to photocopy and upload the whole document others just the citation others just the abstract okay so we don't we just now we don't need to seek consent from the from the from the from the faculty to upload their content okay the other strategy which we have also come in, in place is um, unza we have got a publishing house we the unza press i think most of you are aware of it that publishing department is tasked to publish journals for the university. Uh, examples of the journals which is that uh, publishing uh, department is, is publishing is the uh, Journal of Humanities, uh, African Social Research. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, we have partnered with them. We did the training. We've trained. We trained the editors from that department. All the journal articles which they have published. Uh, we have taught them how to self-archive, okay? Okay, so that is another way we are going to quicken the population of our, uh, through that department, because uh, we are targeting, I think there are close to 5,000 articles which our lecturers have done over time, ever since the University of Zambia was opened. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the, the another strategy is the mandated depositing. Like, what, like I said earlier, in our policy now, it's a requirement that a, a, a faculty, uh, if they are working for the University of Zambia, we don't even need to consult them like we used to beg for them some years back. Uh, we just come across that journal on the internet. If it's in a 
a, a journal which of high report. We have got a right to download it. And then we shall look at the journal using the shop and Romeo. We look at uh, how we shall we, we can add it to our repository. We follow those. We add it to our repository. And then Yunza has, uh, has introduced another policy for academic staff now, uh, where the H index, um, where lecturers' uh, promotions are based on uh, what they have published. Okay, um, uh, publish and perish. Uh, so now we have seen a, 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 a sudden shift now. Uh, lecturers now are on their own coming to 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 have their works deposited in the repository and uh, we have even followed them most of them especially in the school of education if you look at our repository if you have visited them you find that the school of education is leading in terms of uh, stuff for uh, work which has been archived in our uh, repository uh, is because of the aggressive marketing marketing strategies which the IR department has, has, has put in place. And the School of Education is, is the first targeted department. We are moving from there. We shall go to humanities, uh, uh, NS, and so forth and so on. OK. And then uh, these are some of also the, the, the other um, 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 uh, ways we have put in place to populate our IR, that is providing services, okay, like the awareness services, like uh, our library, uh, we have assigned uh, each, we have got academic librarian, librarians who are at master's level, so they are attached to schools, okay, okay, so we have got 12 academic librarians, they are attached to schools, so in those uh, schools, when they are board of studies meetings, they have been mandated to market uh, the, the, the AR and to teach the lecturers how to self archive their work. Okay, they also provide the technical support. We have even in, uh, we, we are even in the process uh, of identifying because most of the departments at UNSA they have got um, resource centers, they have got uh, library uh, resource centers. So we have targeted those resource centers. We are trying to find out how much materials they have and then. Uh, we have started with the School of Natural Sciences, a School of Engineering in particular, where we go to that resource center, uh, look what they have, because we find that most of the staff publications which were done uh, five to ten years ago, most of them are they are not digitized. They appear in, in local journal publications. So we get those local journals, scan them in the library, and then we populate them in the uh, Okay, though also even this model had, has some weaknesses because the, some lecturers, there are some lecturers who have been very adamant, they have refused. They say, no, my work, you can't and, uh, until you pay. There's still that, uh, that resistance. Okay. okay, so there's no single perfect model which you can adopt. You can just use a hybrid. Okay, you can use a, a hybrid. Okay, and then on the policy now, let's move into the policy. Okay. Um, um, uh, what I would advise you before you, because the policy that is the most important uh, tool which will help you to manage and populate your IR. Without that policy, you can't make any headway uh, as from our ex experience. Okay, uh, as, I told, as I explained the area, um, our policy, we've been developing it. So what I would encourage most of our colleagues, uh, from my experience, what I've noticed is that in our case, uh, the, the policy was muted in 2011, and mind you, these public institutions, even those who are coming from private institutions, there's turnover in terms of staff. You find that uh, the pioneers of that uh, program were uh, maybe have retired, Others have been transferred to head the other departments. So you find that in the policy uh, development process stores. And those are, that, 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 those are some of the major issues which delayed the, the enactment of our policy. So what I put in place when I was uh, uh, put in charge of the IR, that is about two to three years ago, uh, I identified the, the earlier people who worked, okay? 
uh, luckily enough, those people were still in the library department, though they were heading other portfolios. So I incorporated them, I constituted the committee. The committee was constituted. Okay, and I deliberately put the deputy librarian as the chairperson of that committee. Okay, and me, I was a secretary, just to make sure that everything was running properly. So those are some of the strategies you can put in place that you can, and then the other thing, um, you have to, like, uh, the, the, you have to also be mindful because, the, uh, like, our our IR policy, uh, our University of Zambia, it has a lot of policies also. It has a, a research policy. It has a copyright policy. Okay. So uh, before you delve to, 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 to design a policy from the scratch, First, do a research, find out what policies are in existence. Okay, so somehow even the delays to to finalize our policy, uh, the first I think mistakes we uh, we did as a library, the, there was not much research done to find out what was already existing. Okay, so there was that conflict. Okay, so we find that you start developing, uh, it reaches a certain, it goes in a meeting, a committee. And then other people, they think that you are trying to step on their toes. Okay, so they will deliberately shoot down the, the presentation, say, no, go back and do this. So, so you find that sometimes you find that if you do a, a research, you find that maybe the existing policies which are there are adequate to cater for the IR policy. Like what I discovered, the research policy, the UNSA research policy, which is developed by the Directorate of Research and Graduate Research. Most of the things are covered in the IR. Okay, so if we had maybe done a research to find out the uh, existing policies in place, maybe we could have quickened the, 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 the process. Okay. So, uh -huh. Okay. So after the, 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 the policy, has been debated has, has been done the other thing is the marketing okay is the marketing uh, the, ma well, the major issue also what also because the, this marketing has to be put in place also by the IR team now in our case our IR team uh, we had the challenges of staffing okay uh, i was running it alone for some time until i was given another assistant so we are two it was sitting in another department we had to demarcate it to make it independent so even the marketing we don't have those uh, you know in marketing you need the special skills how to go about okay yeah so we didn't have the formal training okay mind you i was appointed the manager but uh, i did I, even up to now I, I i think i'm not very confident it's just through passion I've interacted with the system. I can troubleshoot one or two things, but uh, we've never been trained formally in how to manage. The earliest people who went for training, okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So these are some of the strategies I've, I've, I, I, I've mentioned about the policy. Because in the policy, this will mandate everyone to. archive in the air uh, so policy also acts as a plan for adequacy and uh, awareness so in our policy uh, all these uh, factors have been taken care of okay and then we have got even the aims and objectives then there's uh, also in gender interest and action okay and they also it also serves uh, as an example to others for example the average policy mo module and then the national open access model okay so if you can visit this uh, these universities, the University of Shelford, they have got a very good policy because immediately you click on the website, it will even ex uh, explain to you exactly what you are supposed to do. Okay. okay. And then you, uh, for you to, to embark on this project to establish an NIR, identify organizations where you can seek help. The Netherlands are the best. Okay, they really helped us to set up this IR and the Moodle e-learning platform. Okay. And then it's very important to work hand in hand with uh, the IT department. The IT department 
is the key for a successful functioning of uh, the IR. Okay. So, like in our case, we have got a very big symbiotic relationship with the, the CICT. But also the challenges which we have faced is, uh, for example, um, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier in my preamble, I said one member from CICT and two librarians were, went to the Netherlands to be taught how to manage this IR. Okay, so over time you find that that person uh, was shifted to transferred to manage another unit. Okay, so you find that we took it took time again to find another person to take over from that person. Okay, and uh, uh, managing the software, it requires a special kind of training. So even the the person who is assisting us now, uh, as 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 also highlighted that. He, they also need to be taken for this specialized training because you uh, there's uh, you need uh, updates updates uh, you, need, you need the very highly specialized training to do updates which are almost on a weekly basis you need to update the, the software and to manage it if you notice i think part of uh, was it last year our ir was not running for about uh, four to five months we had to wait for someone from the netherlands to come and assist us to keep it running because they had to, they, had, they were updating the software and then in the process we lost track we didn't have the expertise so it support is very crucial in the management of the apart from the management okay all right so uh, other other marketing uh, strategies you, you, you can think of is putting up announcements on YouTube, uh, letters, postcards. Uh, like in my case, I, I, I've, uh, I've done a selective dissemination of information. I've identified the list of lecturers. So usually I interact with them. Uh, I, I send them notices that please, uh, there's this activity taking place. Um, and through presentations like this one, um, uh, you have to take every opportunity to market which you can you can which you can use to to see you have to seize every opportunity so that you market the IRR. Uh, I've, I've, I've engaged a lot of our faculty in a in a fora which are not even a, uh, like for example at maybe we are at maybe at a party i'll talk about the IRR. so you have to seize every opportunity and then um, yes, and then through workshops, and then even email as I talked I talked about it. Yeah. Okay. So, in a in a, in a nutshell, um, that's it. I can invite questions because uh, this is uh, somehow practical. So maybe through the through questions from from you, then maybe we can engage as I'm answering. Maybe I can meet your needs. Right on. All right. Uh, th thank you so much, Zachary. Uh, this never gets old. So um, mm -hmm. I, I got involved with List 5310, I think, here before last. And we almost always invite uh, Zachary um, to come and give talks centered around his experience running the IR. So it's never gets old. Uh, a, a couple of interesting things came up. I, I'm not sure if people are paying attention to uh, small little things like, um, uh, I don't know if it's like, oh, there we go, the, the graph that Zachary was on, right? Um, you know, I've always wondered, I mean, why, why is it that people from Kuwait are interested in the research we are doing, for instance? And there's a graph that you have with those batch at Zachary, where you have uh, heats coming in, such heats coming in from, is it China tops the list, and then you have South Africa. Um, now we can explain China and South Africa, right? Because we, we, we know that the vast majority of um, people actually go to study. We have quite a number of uh, Zambians that go to study in China, and most of them will tend to do research that's aligned towards Zambia. So that's probably where that is coming from. But I don't know why Kuwait is on the list, right? But anyway. Um, um, Adam. So if you have I'm questions. Going to the conference. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm in the office. Now, I thought you were talking to me. I was almost saying, no, I'm not Madame. It's light on. I'm not Madame. Sorry, sorry. I'm talking anyway. to the, to um, the boss. I switched off the mouse. OK. Yeah, that's sorry. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple of interesting things. And, and then, I'm not going to ask questions, but 
Something else I wanted to point at is that, um, I don't know if you can remind us, Zachary, when, when was the IR actually set up? Uh, 2011. 2011. Right? I mean, so 2011, that's, that's, that's about nine years. But if you look at the amount of content we have in there, right, it's, um, it's not indicative of the fact that the IR has actually been around for nine years, right? Um, exactly. So marketing is important. These issues of policy are important, you know. Um, you want to make sure that you have a lot of traction so that there's content in the repository. So uh, if people have questions, please just feel free and uh, ask away.